Thanks for joining us for another episode of Extra Good. Today, it's all about I-beam front suspension on our 66 Ford F100 project. We're gonna take the factory stuff and we're gonna make it just better than it was when it came off the factory line. That's what I try to do. All right, let's go do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I-beams or the twin I-beam suspension was used on trucks from 65 well on into the, I want to say early 90s, but definitely late 80s. Uh, and it came in the F-150 as well as some of the Rangers uh, earlier years had I-beams. It's a really good I, uh, suspension for off-roading. A lot of off-road guys like it. It's very durable, very beefy. It does have some challenges to making it handle, but otherwise it's a great, great suspension. Um, a lot of trucks have, so we're going to talk about what I did and hopefully it helps some people out there, I imagine. Yeah, we're going for a refurbished, really nice build, but we also, we're not slamming this truck like a lot of people might be looking to do with old pickups. Uh, we want it to be a work truck, so the I-beam front suspension is gonna work great for us, keeping it stock, but making it extra good. Yeah, it also keeps the project simple. You know, we're just replacing some wear items. We're not fabricating a whole new suspension, so. Before Ethan came into my life, I actually upgraded the front disc brakes for the Studebaker. There's a funny story about me losing my brakes, which I'll get to later, but it showed me the importance of good front brakes. The kit I use is just one of those conversion kits, and we wanted to go extra good with the truck, so we did a full-on front spindle connected to the suspension, but this one just gives me a bracket that connects to my existing kingpin and setup, and then it uses Monte Carlo and Granada rotors and calipers. So definitely an upgrade, but not quite extra good. How's it going? Welcome to Extra Good. I'm Ethan and we're talking suspensions today. Specifically the I-beam suspension that's in the Ford pickup trucks from like 1965 till um, early 90s. It was forever. So it's a very, very widely used suspension and they're very easy to fix. Um, I know a lot of guys want a hot rod and put in like airbags or independent front suspension, but these trucks are very durable. If you just replace some basic wear items, you can actually get quite a good ride in, in and handling out of the truck. So some of the things that I've pulled out of our truck are right in front of you. Uh, this is the suspension that we pulled off. This is it. There's nothing's been modified. It's This is the junk that came off the junk truck. The springs, you can tell, are pretty corroded. I mean, they're probably weak and, you know, 40, 50 years old, so they're not any good. These shocks, you know, these are like basic $30 replacement shocks. They're not the best in the world. Brakes that came off of this are just drum brakes and you know they're not known for being the best for stopping power this is you know no one's used drum brakes on the front of a car since like I don't know 80s or something like correct me if I'm wrong um, and then even looking at these I-beams these bushings are shot they're totally shot right I can just do that with it all right that's no good this guy right here this is all junk garbage. Look at this. This is how much play the axle was having when it was riding down the road. This is not safe to drive on. So we're replacing all this stuff. All this is new. Even the steering wheels. These things are garbage. Look how floppy that is. That's super floppy doppy. I don't want to ride that. All right. That's good luck. I hope you make it. That's destroyed. It's garbage. Basura. Throw it away. So that's what we've got. And it's ugly. It's covered in rust. It's covered in dirt. I don't touch dirty things. I don't like it. So all this is going away. It's all gone. And what we've done is we replaced a lot of parts that are just wear items, and we've also upgraded the brakes as well. We're getting away from the drums and we're going to a more modern disc brake conversion. 
Here we are looking at my suspension. I've got it all on the chassis and fully assembled. And first thing you'll probably notice is the brakes that I'm running with. This kit's from CPP. Uh, they actually offer a couple different kits. The, there's one kit that uses the existing spindle that is on the truck from the factory. That kit gives you 11 inch rotors and a single piston caliper. And then they got like the Wazoo kit, which is what I went for because I'm going for absolute beefcake on this truck. I don't want any shortcuts. Uh, this is a complete assembly that they send you. A spindle, rotor, hub, caliper, everything. Kingpins, grease fittings. I mean, all you need is your factory I-beam and you can slap all their parts on it and have a brand new disc brake kit. It's a really great kit, 12 inch rotor, dual piston calipers. Um, you really can't beat that versus those old 11 inch drum brakes. Those things were garbage. So I went to some really heavy duty, like 750 pound rate springs. These are what you were using like an F250. My criticism of old Ford trucks has been that the front always seemed too soft and the rear was always too stiff. So what I've been doing with my suspension is stiffening up the front and softening up the rear. Hopefully I can get a good balance out of it and it'll it'll go down the road really nicely. And then in addition to the springs, I got, I got some, some really kick-ass kick -ass built shocks, shocks up front. front. So, so this, this thing, thing should really handle the bumps and some light, light off-roading trails quite well versus those old like $30 dollars roads. This is garbage too. I beams themselves, I sent to a Crosslink powder coat in Fort Worth and they did a really killer job. They're actually the same shop that did the wheels for the truck. So I had them match the I-beams to the wheels and pretty much all the powder coating I'm doing is matching, matching the same color. So it really kind of ties in and, and looks really uh, consistent. And then one thing that I'm adding to the suspension that didn't come from the factory is this sway bar. This is a one inch Abco sway bar. That's really gonna help me out when I'm going around curbs and you know maybe panic steering and having to avoid something. It's gonna control the yaw of the body. It's gonna keep that thing from swaying back and forth and really keep it flat around the turns. So this whole suspension should be really good, but with all these improvements, it still suffers from the one thing that I-beams are notorious for, and it's that they have constantly changing camber as they go down the road. Every time you go over a bump, the wheels either camber in or camber out, and it's because of the design of the I-beam. It's essentially just a stick with a wheel at the end of it. And so when the stick changes angle, so does the wheel. Uh, modern suspensions use two control arms that as the wheel goes through its travel up and down, it's able to keep that wheel straight and maintain that position. This truck just can't do it. I mean, no I-beam suspension can, so everyone complains about that aspect of the handling. What I've done is take steps to help improve that. I've gone to polyurethane bushings, uh, the sway bar, um, tightening up all the steering links and really getting a stiff spring and a good shock to actually control the wheel. All of those things together should give me a really, you know, modern feeling, modern handling truck, even though I'm using 50 year old suspension components. All right, now you've seen the old suspension, you've seen the new suspension on the truck. It's finally time to get around to that story I had for you. Yeah, would you mind telling these fine people exactly what happened when your brakes failed on your Studebaker? So, everybody has to learn their own lessons. And for me, I got the 55 Studebaker not knowing a darn thing about cars. I'd never changed a tire, hadn't done anything. I started daily driving this thing as my everyday driver in Los Angeles when I was in my 20s, before fine Mr. Klein came along. Like that, fine Mr. Klein. <laughs> that is making it into every episode from now on. Fine Mr. Klein. I am no longer Ethan. Ethan is dead. I'm fine Mr. Klein. <laughs> Anyhow, I was driving along one day over to Santa Monica and lo and behold, I lost my brakes. Now, backing up a little bit, I had kept my front drum brakes. I had kept my single pot master cylinder, which what? means if one thing fails, everything fails. I didn't realize this yet. Yeah, that's a common upgrade in the old cars, is get rid of that single master cylinder. In fact, our pickup truck that we're working on originally had a single master cylinder. I refuse to let a car leave my shop with a single master cylinder in it. It's just, it's, it's too risky. 
I would never drive a car with a single pot master so cylinder any longer. Exactly what caused the brakes to fail? What was the actual cause of it? It was the rear rubber hose going from the hard line to the rear wheel. Oh. And it, my exhaust had burned a hole in it. So oh. that was it. I lost 100% of my brakes. But back to the fun part of the story. So uh, also route that exhaust properly away from rubber items and things that can... But anyways, so I was driving along, taking my Studebaker to work. But before I went to work, I was going to go to the YMCA and go for a swim. It was LA. I was on the 405 in traffic, of course. So what did I do as the sun came through the window and made me really sweaty, I peeled off my sweatpants. So I was sitting there in my bathing suit, which just happened to be a vintage style one piece, pink with blue polka dots, and no pants on. So, get off the freeway, I'm going around in suburb Santa Monica, stop sign every couple blocks, and lo and behold, zero brakes. So just foot, just whoop, straight. But, to the floor. All the way to the floor. What did I have cycling through my mind to do when brakes cease to work? Uh, I, I would probably throw it in neutral, look for an e-brake, um, and then probably poop my pants a little bit, depending <laughs> on how fast I'm going and in what neighborhood. Those are all good things to do if you lose your brakes. What I had in my mind was pump the brakes. That's what you see on every TV show. And of course it didn't work because I had zero hydraulic. There was nothing there to pump. There was nothing there to pump. Uh, other key thing, if you lose your brakes, turn off the ignition because- The engine will keep even the car moving. <laughs> it will. So lost my brakes. I had to make a hard right turn right away to avoid hitting some cars. And then I had a stop sign every couple of residential blocks. The street was lined in cars, so I could not rub up against the sidewalk. I blew through a couple stop signs and I was uh, about a block away from a main intersection. The last thing I would ever do would be to roll into a main intersection in a car with no brakes. This is like a six or eight lane wide, like busy LA. This is a very busy intersection. intersection. Yeah. So, I was beginning to look to what could I crash into on the side of the road that would cause my car the least damage and cost the least money. And it's Santa Monica, so it's like Bentley, Lexus, Mercedes, Lamborghini, like for some reason of 83 Volkswagen Jetta. And then there's like other nicer cars. Cause you know, like the guy who rents the pool house, he's got the shit car. <laughs> of course. Of course. So as I was doing this, I had also realized that my car had, it had slowed down a lot by this point. It was really just at a healthy roll. Talking like a, a brisk walking pace? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So in my mind at the moment, I thought if I could just put a little bit of resistance against my car, maybe I could get it to stop and I wouldn't have to crash into something. So what I did was I kicked off my flip flops. So not to uh, cause me to fall. That's a smart move actually. Like recognizing the trip hazard and addressing it early on is a smart move. So that was good. And then I proceeded to open my door, jump out of my Studebaker. While rolling. Run over towards the front, not in front of it, because that would be dangerous. That would be stupid. And I gave the headlight area a little push. That's pretty good, babe. That's, that's, that's pretty good. I don't know what, you know, a hundred pound person is gonna do against 4,000 pounds of rolling Detroit steel, but uh, good effort. E for effort. And it was at that time that I realized I wasn't in fact Superwoman. I wasn't going to stop a moving car. It wasn't working like the movies. <clears throat> I didn't have that much muscles. And that's when I looked up to the driver's seat, realized nobody was sitting in it, and ran back around and jumped on in. I love that. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> I better go back. Because now, 
instead of a car with no brakes and someone at least directing it, now it's a car with no brakes and no one steering. I mean, F it, right? The brakes are gone, no point in steering now. Just go for it. So. So before I could feel like too much of a badass stunt woman, my car happily rolled to a stop. Maybe. I didn't have to crash it into anything. It didn't roll into a busy intersection. My car was safe and thank goodness because Studi is so much my heart. But what brings the story full circle is that- So like five minutes after all this goes down, I'm like walking to my car at Home Depot. And mind you- Happily thinking about the girl he had just gone on two dates at, with. At this point, our relationship consisted of a drive to San Pedro to look at some boats and a walk- Meeting in an alleyway for the first time ever. And a walk down the ever so romantic Los Angeles River, <laughs> which if you're not familiar- classy. Is like a glorified gutter. Uh, so we walked down there, that, that was it. That was as much as I knew about this girl. Uh, I knew she had a Studebaker with a, with a, you know, it was hopped up and stuff, that's about it. So I get this phone call and she tells me exactly that whole story, what went down. So I, you know, first thing, I'm a gentleman. I asked if she's safe, yes. Is, okay, next I'm a car person. So is the car safe? Yes, okay, car safe, cool. So I tell her, I'm like, well, go to work, right? And the shop that she was gonna have uh, at the car towed to was actually just across the river from where my shop was. Convenient. So I told her to just go ahead, have the car towed after work, and that I would be uh, generous enough to give this strange girl with a death trap of a car um, that I had recently ridden in, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she got the car dropped off and I picked her up and, and took her home. and. And that was like date two and a half of our relationship. And here we are almost 10 years later, married for eight. So yeah. It's a good way to start a relationship, but not a good way to start a car build. Yeah. Like, so fix your brakes, find yourself a husband you can trust, and be on your merry way. We hope you guys have a great time in the garage with whatever you're building and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff down below. Click all the good things. Tell us, Tell us your, your jacked up car mistake. Like, what, yeah, what, yeah. what, what crazy, crazy death you death you death stories, stories yeah, what have you done? done? What have you done? Stupid. What, what bad, bad has happened to you? Like, any, any sweet, sweet jumps, jumps involved? involved? That, would, that would be cool. cool. I mean, like, I mean, like Duke, Duke style. Because everybody's, everybody's done, done something stupid, and hopefully they will also get to the point where they do things extra good. So thanks for watching, guys.